Hey friends, Susan Kane here coming to you with, well, an almost live video. I tried, but we had some internet connectivity issues. I am in the midst of fundraising through Unbridled for a 21-year-old thoroughbred mare. Her name is Honorette. She has been trapped in the slaughter pipeline for a few weeks. I have been watching her. Nobody has stepped up for her. She is located in Oklahoma, where we've rescued so many horses who have been imperiled in this pipeline. This mare has been bred every single year since I believe 2006. She is now age 21. Uh, she's so beautifully pedigreed that sharks have been circling to try and get her out of the kill pen so they could breed her again. She has been bred to the finest thoroughbreds in this country. Her past connections are among the biggest names in the industry. It seems that a blind eye has been turned towards her. We will, of course, reach out to everyone and give them an opportunity, those from her past, to participate in safeguarding her future. But for right now, friends, I need your help to try and get her home safe to sanctuary at Unbridled. Her bail is either 1000 or 1050 It's about 2500 to ship her. It's a 1,400-mile ride um, here to New York and we will be quarantining her off-site. So that will be an extra several hundred dollars um, to take care of that. Any contribution you can make is a blessing. It is a lifeline to this mare. She will be the fourth thoroughbred who we have rescued this year. Not this year, I'm sorry, this month. This month has been so long, the month of July, that it seems like it's been a year. Thoroughbreds who have contributed millions of dollars in economic impact to thoroughbred breeding and racing, and yet not a dime has been set aside to protect them, and few, if any, past connections step up to make a contribution. We always reach out to past connections. I am a past connection, friends. I am a former owner, breeder. I galloped horses for Todd Pletcher, Christophe Clement. I thought I would spend the whole of my life in thoroughbred racing, on the front end of it. Little did I know when I discovered how many thoroughbreds were actually ending up in the slaughter pipeline that the advocate in me would be born. I stopped owning and breeding and I started being a voice for these magnificent beings. They have no one standing up for them but for us. Any type of aftercare from the thoroughbred industry is not equine centric, it's stakeholder centric, meaning the people, the factions, and the businesses in the industry. If truly, friends, think about this, if truly the thoroughbred horse came first, there would never be a need for aftercare because nobody would breed a horse and use a horse that they alone could not be responsible for or make plans to take care of in the event that something happens to them. Here at Unbridled, we've got about 60 horses in residence. The thoroughbreds that we have rescued have contributed hundreds of millions of dollars. They are owned, they were owned by top participants in thoroughbred racing and breeding who are still active participants. This has to change. And unless it does, any aftercare in the name of truly caring for the horses is made a mockery of because past connections need to step up, secure and safeguard the futures for all of the horses that they unilaterally choose to bring into this world. And I believe it was the head of TAA, one of them said that every past connection is morally obligated to that. That's my belief. Let's see that love in action for these horses. I invite everyone who is a past connection of a horse at Unbridled to make a contribution to help us pay for your horses. These horses cost the same to keep, whether they're commercial at the racetrack, whether they're breeding and in production, a feed bag is still $20, $25. Bale of alfalfa, $50. Bale of hay, $6. The economic impact that Unbridled makes to our community in feed, hay, grain, bedding, so on and so forth, tourism, is half a million to a million dollars a year. We don't get any subsidies. 
We don't get any support from any umbrella organizations in the thoroughbred industry. In fact, when I applied for TAA accreditation, even though our organization met and exceeded the standards, I was told it was because I'm too outspoken about abuse, breakdown, drugging, and slaughter. Think about that. What does that say for who that organization really champions for? At Unbridled, I am proud to be an independent voice to champion for the care and protection of thoroughbreds and all breeds of horses. And I invite you to join with me and to inspire past connections to do right by their horses. Horses give every drop of themselves for the asking and they deserve our very, very best. Help us friends, honor Honorette to bring her home safe to sanctuary at Unbridled where she can live out the rest of her golden years. She's 21 right now. She might live to 31, 35. That would be wonderful. She deserves love, care, grooming to be fussed over, to be treasured. When you see the list of stallions that she was bred to, all of the economic impact that she drove for people, whether it be through racing, breeding, selling, sales companies, sales agents, you name it. If everybody in her past contributed, for example, if they joined the 21 Club, right? Contributed $21 a month, they could safeguard her future. That's the change that we want to see in the industry for thoroughbreds. If you're gonna race them, for God's sake, protect them for the whole of their life. You're gonna breed them when they're retired, give them a retirement pasture. All these big, beautiful farms in Kentucky and Ocala, I've been on many of them all over the world. Don't forget, I was deeply entrenched in this industry. My mother owned a share in Acceler. I grew up with the likes of Bunker Hunt, Bruce McNall, Taylor Made Farm were our agents. We were, we were in, in it. We pinhooked, we did every aspect of thoroughbred racing and breeding. But when I saw what happened to these magnificent beings and how they were disregarded when they were no longer useful, I stopped and I started advocating. And I invite you to advocate with me and to put your advocacy into action by making a contribution, honoring Honorette, and helping us to bring her home to sanctuary forevermore at Unbridled.